Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you what I eat in a day on a day where I'm having an exception meal or what some people refer to as a cheat meal. Stick around because I'm gonna be sharing with you my philosophy around eating exception meals and the reasons why I think you should start planning to incorporate them now rather than being afraid of them. If you haven't already, please tap the like button. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and gets this video shown to more people. We really appreciate it. Okay, so I just woke up. It's like, I'm almost six in the morning. And every morning I always have ketones first. For a really long time, I used to wake up and drink my coffee immediately. But after doing that for probably a year, year and a half, I decided that I was gonna switch it and instead drink ketones. So I use about 20 ounces of water and then I always drink an Unleash. So these are just, to be honest, they get my brain going and they wake me up because I like to have a good amount of time in the morning to do a lot of things. I really think it's important to set yourself up for success by utilizing at least some point in the day where you can have some quiet time and you can plan your day. Planning is really big. I go on and on about it with my clients because if we don't have like a target of what we're trying to get, then we can't really figure out a clear way to get there. So I, my time in the morning is super important to me. I make sure that I plan my day. I make sure that I set my intentions for the day. Like I set my tasks for the day. Like what will I feel successful if I complete today? And normally that list is like, two things, three things. And then along with my ketones, so these, the reason I like this specific line is because it's 30% more ketones than caffeine. And the weird thing, the odd thing about it is that the caffeine doesn't affect me the way caffeine normally does. Like it doesn't make me jittery or, you know, antsy. Then I don't have any more food again until it is coffee time. Okay, so about three, three to four hours after I have my ketones every morning, I always have coffee. Sometimes it's caffeinated, sometimes it's decaf. I don't add a ton to my coffee, but the whole time that I've been keto, I have always used an MCT supplement and a collagen supplement. That used to be like kind of complicated with lots of tubes and tubs. I just want to do it as easy as possible. So this is the only product that I use as far as the MCT and collagen, because it has like four types of collagen, three types of MCT. It's from the same company that I buy my ketones from. It's really good. They've got a couple different flavors. So I make coffee with my Nespresso pod and then I just add that creamer and then I add two pumps of Tarani sugar-free French vanilla. And it's really good, really yummy. There are probably syrups with cleaner ingredients, but I don't really mind. It's like Splenda, I think, in the Tarani. But French vanilla is my ultimate favorite flavor. There's a cinnamon flavor that my husband really loves, um, but that's all I do. I just do two pumps and then I froth this with the frother that comes with the Nespresso maker um, with a little bit of milk adamia nut milk. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Okay, I know this is a what we eat in a day video, but I'm just gonna, we're about to do a podcast, so I'm gonna show a little uh, behind the scenes, I guess, of the podcast room. <laughs> oh, flex <flexing. laughs> It took you that long? Wow. Yeah, we just come in here and we just flex. Yep. Okay, so I made this wrap. It has three types of meat on it. Roast beef, pastrami, and cracked pepper turkey. I just added cheese and pickles, and then I'm gonna dip it in this Kickin' Ranch from Jimmy John's, which is left over from earlier this week. So for lunch, I always have like a wrap with these chips, these Hilo chips. The ranch ones are my favorite. Okay, we're about to go on date night. Not much, she's not coming. 
we go on a date night every Sunday night and I almost 100% of the time allow, yeah, allow myself to eat carbs. So tonight we're going to hot pot. I will be having some rice and some noodles in the hot pot. And I don't know, Ryan might be getting sushi, but we're gonna show you guys a little bit of that and how I eat on carb up days. Hey. My philosophy on cheat meals or what I, and what I teach my clients to calling them exception meals, they're just like an exception to what you normally do, is that if you don't learn the skills to practice eating food that you love and that you know is gonna be in your life for the rest of your life, like you know you're not gonna never eat a donut again or you know that you're gonna be eating donuts in your life. You know you're gonna be having birthday cake sometimes but a lot of us we don't have we don't let ourselves have any of those things while we're in the weight loss process because we think that we can't have them and still lose weight which is just bullshit but i recommend to my clients and something i practice myself is practicing eating those foods on purpose just practice eating them so you know that you can trust yourself otherwise you're going to lose your weight and you're going to be left feeling terrified of food do you have anything to add ryan I just feel like you have to learn how to lose weight while including those kinds of foods because if you can do that there's nothing to be afraid of yeah you don't want to be afraid of certain types of foods you don't want to exclude them completely from your life because eventually you're going to snap one day and just like binge eat all the foods everyone does it all yeah. the time but if you could learn how to eat them and not overeat them and not be afraid and include it on a regular basis I think that completely changes, changes the entire perspective of, of losing weight. Yeah, and this is a specific problem for people who, who follow a diet that could be considered strict, like keto or low carb. You will like lose your weight, but then you'll get to a point where you're like, yeah, I'm terrified of a cinnamon roll. Like I'm- I can't have that. Yeah, like we really have these ingrained beliefs, not just like, like they're so powerful because we believe them so hard because maybe we did lose our weight while not eating them, but you can also lose your weight while eating them. And that's, I just recommend for some type of balance and freedom so that you don't put yourself in that place where once you do allow yourself to have it or on a whim you decide, all right, that's it, I'm having a piece of cake. Then next thing you know, you're eating for six hours straight and it's just because that mentality of I can't have this, this is bad, I can't lose weight eating this, all those beliefs that we have, they just come bubbling up to the surface and we eat everything because then the mentality is like, well, tomorrow I'm back on my shit. Tomorrow the diet starts. Tomorrow I'm back to my strict plan tomorrow. So if we have that mentality where we don't know the next time we're gonna get this food, that really sets us up for a lot of self-sabotage as soon as we open that door a little bit and we're like, screw it, I'm just gonna have a little something. It causes way more self-sabotage than if you just learn to intentionally plan that food, it puts you completely back into control. A lot of people overeat too, when they have, when they, even when they plan their cheat meals, yeah. they'll completely overeat. But I believe that that's for the same reason. Yeah. They plan the meal, so even though they're being intentional, even though they're doing it how I teach them to plan it on purpose, there's still these sneaky thoughts right underneath the surface that are like, but I shouldn't be eating this. But I sh th But this isn't the best choice I could make. But or, or, I don't know when I'm gonna eat this again. Yeah, it's all of those thoughts underneath the surface. Planning it doesn't take away your beliefs about food being good or food being bad. So even if you plan it, if you don't also challenge the beliefs beliefs that you have that like, I can have this, I can moderate this, I'm learning how to moderate this. If you don't address the bullshit thoughts right underneath the surface, the action that you're gonna take is gonna be massively overeating the food. Then once you do that, you're gonna weigh in the next day, your scale is gonna be up three pounds and it's gonna be not because you ate the food, but because you massively overeat the food. And then what you're gonna tell yourself is, see, yeah. I can't have pizza. I see it again and again all the time. I think it's such a good skill, even if you're keto 98% of the time, to intentionally practice getting confident in your beliefs that like there isn't good food, bad food, there's just food that you choose to eat most of the time and other food you choose to eat, you know, occasionally that you're able to moderate, so. So I don't think I even mentioned where we were going for dinner, maybe I did, but we, me specifically, love hot pot. Shabu shabu. A lot of people don't like it. It's really, you have to cook your own meat in a boiling pot. It gets kind of 
It's pretty labor intensive. So they put this hot, hot pot is a boiling bowl of water and they give you raw meat and you're, you get rice and sauces and you cook the meat in boiling water. This place has this little like flame thing they light underneath the pot on your table. I wonder what material it's made of. It, it, it looks not, like a jelly. It smells like propane. Yeah. Kind of. I moved my, my paper napkin a little too close to it <laughs> and it got on fire. Yeah. It caught on fire on the table. And he couldn't like really get it out. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't say anything but like Ryan it's still on fire. <laughs> like you didn't know. <laughs> I'm like Ryan it's it's like still on fire. It wouldn't stop. Slow. It wouldn't like I don't know we didn't know if you would like burn the table by pushing it into the table but. I had to like slice a smother. Very it flammable itself. napkin. So this was considered a cheat meal or an exception meal. It was far from keto or loca, but like not that far. Not that far, dude. We, we ordered some sushi rolls too. I had, I think, three pieces of sushi. I didn't even finish my rice. I dunked in the dipping sauces that are probably sugary, the and key, I don't the care. The key is to not feel obligated to eat all your food. Yeah. I didn't eat all the sushi. I left a few pieces behind. I could have eaten them. There was no like carpe diem vibe. Like, what does that mean? It means seize the day. Yes. There was no like, all right, this is it. Like, it'll probably be six more months till we can have another cheat. Yeah. It was just like, we go out every Sunday. So if you relate to the fact that you feel like eating food that's not keto is always stressful, it's probably because you're never planning it on purpose. You're probably, you probably have a really bad relationship because your relationship comes from like, not planning it so anytime you are eating food it's like so much stronger but I shouldn't be doing this because you're like doing it behind your own back it's like and even it's not just the fact that you're like carbs and sugar are bad it's like carbs and sugar are bad and look at me I'm a monster I can't control myself I can't even eat one cookie and I just think that's just because you haven't practiced eating cookies in moderation and knowing I don't need to eat all the cookies because tomorrow I could literally have another cookie if I wanted to next Sunday I can literally have rice again I don't have to feel like I don't know the next time I'm gonna get rice with soy sauce that's the key is practicing moderation yeah and you and also like be, you're gonna be bad at it in the beginning you're gonna go the only way you know what enough food is is to go past it yeah the only way to know oh that was too much is to eat too much it's the only way you can kind of get to that stage where you're like oh this is my sweet spot so yeah I didn't finish all my rice and I love rice. I didn't order pot stickers. We had them last week when we went. Yeah. I didn't need them again. And so you'll you'll find that I think you have more food freedom by practicing having exceptions because that urgency and that franticness and the panic of like, damn, I don't know when I'm gonna get this food again is gone. And so it just takes so much drama out. Okay, so now we're wrapping up the day. I pretty much always, every single night, regardless of whether it's an exception day or a normal day, I have a sweet treat. Sometimes it has sugar, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't. But tonight, I'm going with the Chalk Zero peanut bar. They've been out of this for a really long time. So I'm gonna show you how good it is. Like it's literally full of peanuts. It's so good. But yeah, that's pretty much that's what I eat on a day with exceptions. <laughs>